My name is uh, Terry Rock and I'm the Executive Director of the Alberta Small Brewers Association and I want to welcome everyone to day two of the first annual Alberta Craft Brewing Convention. Uh, we had a great night last night and I want to thank ATB Financial for sponsoring our welcoming reception and awards uh, program. Uh, I'm going to just do a couple of announcements then I'm going to introduce our first session of the day. Um, the first thing I want to do is thank actually all of our sponsors for uh, stepping up into this little adventure that we decided to go on not many weeks ago. Uh, ATB Financial and Cask Global Canning Solutions uh, and liquorconnect.com slash connect logistics um, are, were, are all of our, our top sponsors um, and they've all been really great to work with. Thank you so much to those folks. Uh, this morning, we, uh, your breakfast is sponsored by Arthur J. Gallagher, Insurance and Risk Management. We have Tracks sponsored by M&P LLP, RAR Malting, BSG Canada, Prospero, Jim Pattison Lease, and AlbertaApparel.com. Um, I'm told to tell you that the Wi-Fi is the Sheraton guest, and the password is Brewers. Password Brewers. Um, today we have three separate tracks, uh, each room. Uh, we have the Business Excellence track presented by MNP, that's the Palermo room. We have the Brewing Excellent Excellence track presented by Cask, that is this room here. And we have the Collaboration track presented by ATB Financial, that's the Monaco room. Your AV is sponsored by BSG, and the breakfast today is sponsored by AJG, uh, Arthur J. Gallagher Insurance. Sam Feldman was here last night, and he actually had to take off early, so he left me a couple of, of notes um, from Arthur J. Gallagher, so I'll just read these for you. <clears throat> um, they're very uh, happy to be associated with Alberta Small Brewers Association. It was their pleasure to host the breakfast. Uh, Arthur J. Gallagher has a few clients already in the industry, and they're excited to be involved with such a growing and vibrant industry. He says that insurance and risk management, insurance and managing risk is simply about protecting your balance sheet, helping you understand your risk, and help protect it. And that's what Arthur J. Gallagher is all about. We have a great um, uh, endorsement of them from the Bear Hill, the guys at Bear Hill Group, uh, Last Best, uh, Wood Buffalo, Jasper, and Banff Avenue Brewing. So if you want to talk about their experience with them, track those guys down. Um, and so we thank Arthur J. Gallagher for being here with us this morning and for providing you this great breakfast. So today's, uh, this session here is, uh, we uh, really wanted to make today about tapping into the wisdom of an industry that feels like it is just starting, but in fact there is deep wisdom in Alberta about brewing um, and that we thought it would be great to tap into someone who has that experience. So I'm going to uh, leave uh, the introductions up to Jim Bladen from ATB Financial. Uh, Jim, uh, as you know, is the Director of Business Development for ATB Financial. He was up here last night and we thought it would be a great idea for him to spend some time chatting with Art Froelich uh, of AgriView. And uh, so I will leave it to Jim to take it away. Thank you everyone for coming and we'll see you around the day. I'm going to... Gary, uh, good morning everyone and welcome uh, to the first annual Alberta Craft Brewing Convention. As Gary mentioned, uh, my name is Jim Wade and I'm Director of Business Development of ATV. Um, and I've had the pleasure of working with entrepreneurs uh, in and around the province of Alberta for about 30 years and in particular uh, working with uh, crafts for about the last eight. Um, I'm honored to be with you today in a room that's uh, surrounded by business and agricultural entrepreneurs and surrounded by true beer lovers. And it never ceases to amaze me that uh, in an environment like this where we're anticipating 175 or so people, we get close to 400, and we didn't even come close to running short of beer last night, so kudos for that. Um, he's the bank uh, of entrepreneurs, and as such, a very proud supporter of the craft beer industry, uh, as you all embody the entrepreneurial spirit that we at ATV love to embrace and love to serve. Now I'd like to introduce you all to a gentleman that really doesn't need much introduction, uh, Art Froelich. Art's president and CEO of AgriView. Um, quite the business history you have, Art. Let's highlight a few of those pieces. 
You know, the past president and managing partner of Ad Farm, and currently a strategic advisor and board member at Ad Farm, one of North America's largest agriculture and food marketing and communications companies. Over the last 30 years, Mr. Froelich uh, has held senior executive positions at uh, Horse Group, which is Bayer, Viterra, West Ham, which is uh, Rarno. Um, Art continues to work uh, with Canadian food and agricultural companies in developing international markets for their products. Uh, he is currently uh, the chair of FB Sciences and chair of Ag West Biosciences. In addition, he sits on many corporate boards throughout Canada and also on the Board of Governors at Olds College. Uh, additionally, he has also served on the boards of uh, the Multi Party Research Institute, Western Green Elevator Association, and also the Canadian 4-H Council. In 2005, Art was awarded the Distinguished Agrologist Award by the Alberta Institute of Agrologists and the Alberta Centennial Gold Medal by the province of Alberta. He was inducted into the Bioindustrial Hall of Fame in 2012 and received an honorary degree from Olds College in 2014. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Art Cole. <laughs> Art, uh, most recently uh, you've been using your industry experience and passion to assist new craft brewers with their business plans and how to bet best get financing in the space. So let's chat a little bit about that. So when you hear the phrase, the business of brewing, what does that mean to you? Well, thank you very much, uh, Jim. I don't have to stay turned off and hear uh, Sometimes they say I'm soft-spoken, so uh, uh, I have to uh, confess, I, uh, I used to speak a lot at conferences, and five years ago I quit speaking. And every time I raise my speaker fee, they, I get more invitations, so that wasn't working. But what Terry and Jim did is they said, you get free beer. And obviously they found my soft spot. But it's a, so it's a pleasure to be here today. Before I answer that question, there's a few people in the audience here I, I want to recognize. Uh, one is uh, Bob Sutton uh, with RAR. Uh, Bob worked for me in a number of different locations. He kept quitting and moving on, and I kept reeling him back in. And finally, when I left RAR, he stayed there. So obviously I was the problem, not him. Uh, so I uh, just wanted to... Also, Paul Gutro, and I saw Paul last night, I don't know if he's here this morning with Big Rock. Uh, when I joined uh, West Canada Iron Malding, I went to uh, Big Rock, who were our customer, our first customer, as a matter of fact, and uh, met the bird keeper in Larry Kerwin and said, I want to learn how to make beer so I can be a better supplier to you. And they kind of looked at me as if I was crazy. So they called Ed McNally in, and uh, they said, here's the new president of West Canada Malding, and he wants to work for us and learn how to make beer. And it said, are you serious? And I said, I'll work for free. He said, you're hired. So if any of you knew Ed McNally, that's, uh, that was sort of his approach. Uh, there's a, a couple of other people in the audience here. That, uh, I see Jim Button. I think I saw Jim earlier this morning. Uh, it's, it's the Village Brewery is one that we follow fairly closely when we develop our brewery and distilling business in, on, in, on Vancouver Island. And uh, their business model, I thought, was very unique and very different. And, and uh, I think I saw Jim earlier this morning. So in answer to your question, uh, I think I saw him. In the back, there you are. Jim, you're sitting in the back for a change. You should be up front where you usually are. Um, the business of brewing. Um, Eric and I've been involved in a number of startup businesses, not all in the brewing and malting business, although that has been a recent venture of ours. And I'll talk about that in a little more detail. But my philosophy on business is very, very, very simple. And if it doesn't meet these three criteria, I don't do it. Number one is you've got to be, you've got to love what you do, and you've got to be absolutely passionate for what you do. So when I get approached for people to, for me to invest in, that's the first thing I look for. Uh, and and if, if that's not the case, the second thing I look for is people who are willing to learn from their mistakes, because God only knows we make a lot of mistakes. And uh, so I want people who are willing to learn something new and different every day and be able to adjust very rapidly to changing market environments, changing processes. And the third thing is you've got to be prepared to make some money. And unless you can provide me with those three things and make me comfortable, I'm really not interested in the business. So when I talk about the business of brewing, it's very simple. It applies to most startups and most agriculture. And all of my investments are in agriculture, every single one of them. 
Now, before I got up here this morning, uh, I get very nervous before I speak, and uh, I smoke a pack of cigarettes and drink a wrap of coffee. And, and uh, I always remember a story my dad told me when we were on the farm in Saskatchewan. We still farm in Saskatchewan as well. And uh, we probably grow the second best malty barley in the world next to Albert. I will admit that. But he also says, whenever you're feeling a little under stress, you should remember the story about the three dogs running through the muddy field. You got one dog out in front and two dogs chasing the front one. And this goes on for miles. And this front dog is kicking mud into the face of the back two dogs. And finally one dog in the back says, isn't this a bitch? And the other one says, it better be. So he tells us, look, look for the optimism in everything you do. And that's what I try to approach life as as well. So as I say, the business of brewing is no different than the business of, of anything else that you do. And those are the three foundations that I uh, believe in when you're, when you're starting a business, looking for investors, uh, looking for anything you want to do. So I hope that answers your question. I think it does very well. Thank you. And yeah, I mean, it's also goes with a little bit of humor in there as well. Uh, I think that that's one of the most important things as we continue to go through you know, journeys, whether it's in a craft space or in this space. Is, uh, sometimes don't take things too seriously. You've got to have a little bit of fun in there as well. Are you receiving quoted as saying that we need to help brewers become better business people, not just people who love beer. Can you explain a little bit more about that for us? Well, I think uh, I love beer. I love scotch. Uh, I think if I could find a way to survive on just those two beverages, I would be a very happy person, but unfortunately they, they can't provide anything. But I think everybody in this room is very passionate about what you do, and that's one of the unique things about the brewing industry. And it started off uh, centuries ago and it is today, everybody's passionate about it. But I guess the issue that some of this, the challenges I see that we're going to be facing is that if you look at the number of, of craft breweries that are on the drawing boards, right now a rising tide raises all boats. And the growth of this sector of the brewing industry, of the beer industry, is just phenomenal. But I sit back and I think, what's going to happen if, if we have another 100 craft breweries starting up in Alberta, or 200? Apparently, uh, there's 2,000 on the drawing boards in the U.S. as we speak. We've been told this morning 400 will be launched this year. Uh, it sounds like a big number, and it is a big number when you look at how many are already operating in the U.S. So when I, when I think about that question, I think about how can we prepare our next, our current and next generation of entrepreneurs uh, to survive in what will probably be a very different and changing marketplace. And it's going to have to involve some very significant business thinking as opposed to, you all make great beer. And I think I probably drank a bottle or a glass or a can of uh, just about everybody's in this room at one point in time or another. But I think some of the things that you have to think about when you're starting a business is there's some basic fundamentals uh, that you have to, uh, have to go through. And the first thing is uh, don't ever forget quality. One of the things that the big kid breweries forgot was that they were preparing to produce a very generic beer that the consumer, by and large, was looking for something different. So I'll just remember, quality is absolutely critical in, uh, in what you're going to be doing. The second thing is, make sure your management skills are where they have to be. If you don't have adequate management skills, select a advisory board or a board of directors that can bring some of those skills to you. And some of those that you need are financial skills, perhaps marketing skills, although this industry is pretty darn good at marketing. But as it evolves and becomes more competitive, you're going to have to be even better at doing that. So make sure you can put together a group of advisors or a board that can provide some of that. Uh, how are you going to differentiate your product? What's going to make your story different than everybody else's? Right now, the craft story alone is good enough to get business. Uh, that may not be good enough in the future when you're one of 400 or 300. So how do you differentiate? And that's what I, I reflect on you know, Jim and his people have done at the village. They have a pretty amazing story in terms of their social license that they've been able to develop. And as I say, we follow that we follow that we were very carefully over the last number of years when we were established in ours. So make sure you differentiate yourself. And I and there's a, literally hundreds of ways of doing that. Make sure you can live up to that story, whatever your story happens to be. Make sure you have the very best and latest and most innovative marketing skills and tools 
possible. New media is going to change everything, and has changed everything, and will continue to change it. I think this industry, uh, when, I, when I search the internet, uh, you're probably pretty uh, 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 good at that right now. You're going to have to be much, much, much better. The last thing, or not the last thing, the, the second last thing is, is the business has to be scaled. You've got to be able to grow your business to a sufficient size that it's going to get a return to you as entrepreneurs and founders and owners. And if you happen to have shareholders, God forbid, uh, you want to get a return to them. Shareholders can be patient, but only to a certain degree. So it's got to be scaled. You've got to be able to produce enough theater to make those kind of returns and you still have. And then the final thing, and this is maybe going to be the most difficult thing to do, is how do you capitalize the energy? How do you raise the funds that can you know, allow your business to survive, succeed, and then grow? And I think if, uh, if I'm an actor here, uh, that's going to be one of the most difficult things. Because there might be a young fellow in the room here, Yoke and Far. I don't know if Yoke is here or not. I saw him last night for a few minutes. This young man walked into my office about three years ago with two bottles of beer in his hand. And he beat it in his garage. And he said, I want you to help me build a brewery, and I only need $130,000. And uh, if you open to your he'll remember these conversations very, very well. And I said, really? That's all it takes to start a brewery, $130,000? $130, $130, well, at the end of the day, it takes about a million and a half dollars. And Yoke and I had breakfast for probably every month for about two years, developing his business plan, putting together a board for him, arranging for his legal structure, arranging for his financing, arranging for uh, how he developed his operating man and right memorandum. And I, I do believe, probably within the next three or four months, we will be opening his brewery. But here was a case of a startup young entrepreneur who had great passion, great vision, and over a two-year period of time had to learn a lot of very valuable business lessons. And I was just laughing and joking because he kind of had breakfast with me at our famous favorite British restaurant and said, look Art, am I going to be meeting with the black angel this morning or the white angel this morning? <laughs> because uh, I was often quite critical of, of what he was doing, but also very supportive of what he wanted to do. So I think those are the six things that you have to bear in mind when you want to uh, be a successful brewer, craft brewer in this marketplace. And it may not be that critical now, but it's going to be very, very critical. That's fantastic, Art. Thank you. Um, so quality 